Mr. Hillel, welcome all of you, your ambassadors, ministers, excellencies, friends, human rights heroes. I was asked by Hillel to comment on the 75th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Rights, authored by René Cassin, a French hero, writer, human rights leader. What did the world look like 75 years ago? Let's take a snapshot. I was asked to comment in part because I'm the only one in the room who remembers 75 years ago. A unique qualification. It was a different world. It was the world after World War II. Human rights were in the ascendancy. The great battle was between the West, so-called West, and the Soviet Union, between what we called freedom and democracy, and what we termed behind the Iron Curtain, the communist world, where human rights were not respected, were not recognized, except in words, but not in deeds. However bad Russia may be today, it was worse then. 75 years ago, there was no Mauritania. Much of Africa was still not free. There were colonies, British, French, Dutch. There were not the independent countries in Asia as there are today. Human rights had reached an ascendancy, but really only in the West. The rest of the world may have given lift service to it, because Nazi Germany tossed out her in Japan, fascist Italy had been defeated in World War II, and the world was on a cloud, a cloud which had at its zenith the United States. In 1989, the Berlin Wall came down on November 9, and Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union changed from being communist countries one or two tolerable, most of them intolerable. The Soviet Union, even under Gorbachev, did not respect human rights. Then you had in the Soviet Union Yeltsin, Boris Yeltsin, who the Russians thought would bring democracy to Russia. You had democratic leaders in Eastern and Central Europe. It looked like, once again as if the world was moving in the direction of human rights. And what happened? Yeltsin was replaced by Putin in Hungary today. You have a rightist authoritarian government, the same in Poland. The situation in much of the world is worse, not better. And the question is why? What do we look at as the causal factors? Is it ethnicity? Is it religion? Is it race? I would suggest to you it's none of those factors. Like it or not, it's human nature, which is both good and bad. It's bad because we're going to have human nature as long as we're here. It's good because it's malleable. We can improve the situation as it exists today. This is not the nadir. This is not the bottom. This is an opportunity to move forward, to promote human rights. And what controls human rights in the world? You heard it when Hillel read the petition from 50 ambassadors extolling human rights in China. What controls human rights, like it or not, is political power. If you look at the governments in power around the world and put labels on them, that is the best barometer as to the strength or weakness of human rights. If you have democratic governments, you have governments that respect minorities, ethnic, religious, racious, racial, if you have governments that have checks and balances, an independent judiciary, an independent media, freedom of the press, restraints on the power of the executive, whether it be Mr. Putin in Russia, or Mr. Xi in China, 
or Mr. Erdogan in Turkey, if you have checks and balances, if there's a restraint on authoritarian government, human rights will do all right, better than all right. We have problems in the West as well, even in my country, the United States, which folks last night were telling me they'd always looked up to. Two weeks ago in the Senate, we had arguments on behalf of President Trump seeking his acquittal from impeachment. And the argument was basically, and this is worth listening to, you cannot judge the president's motives. It doesn't matter whether his motives are good or bad if he has the authority to cut off aid to Ukraine. The reason for it cannot be examined. That is, my friends, an expression of authoritarianism. Even my country, which was created by a constitution and by a declaration of independence, which extolled and enshrined human rights, is today, 170 years later, hearing those words in the Senate of the United States. None of us, none of us is immune from the invasion of disrespect for, in many places, destruction of human rights. But all of us, individually and collectively, have a voice. And it's up to us to have that voice heard in favor of, in championing, and resoundingly proclaiming the inviolability of human beings, the respect to which all human beings are entitled. And that can be protected in the world in which we live by the exercise of political power. As wonderful as it is to see all of you, I'd rather see all of you in the United Nations representing your countries, representing your people, heading your governments. That is where power resides, and that's ultimately where the struggle for human rights takes place. Thank you.